following is an encore presentation of the Howard Stern Show. All right, very good, very good. Here we are, Saturday night, Howard Stern Show. And, uh, of course, very beautiful Robin Quivers. Why, thank you. Yes, what a yes. handoff. Very <laughs> lovely, very lovely. What a show we have tonight. Linda Blair stopping by. An old friend. Yeah, she looks really good. I mean, she really looks nice. She's very pretty. Yeah, because she used to be kind of chubby and full-faced. Well, she was one of those people who you probably thought when she was a little kid, oh, she's going to grow up really nice. Yeah. And then she had those chunky years. Yeah, and I got her to do a really cool sketch uh, this week. Hey, you ever notice these news people... On the local station where we tape... Just now, just before we started. You notice the news people will never mention my name? But lately they started mentioning my name? This is really weird. I think around the Channel 9... Channel 9 is where we tape the show. I think Universal the, 9. Universal 9, yeah. <laughs> you know, excuse me. You can get shot around here for not saying Universal 9. That was a big mistake. Yeah, that's fooling someone. All I see is Gilligan's Island and Tony Danza. <laughs> it don't look any different to me. It's very universal. Yeah, but where we tape... So the news people come on before us, and the news department here, I, I think they kind of like... They kind of like look down on us and they hate us. Yeah. So there's one guy, there's this uh, Reg Wells, He's sort of like a black guy. I don't know. He looks Indian to me. You think he, he's black? I don't see a dot in his head. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Now, he always, at the end of the news, says my name. Uh-huh. But Jennifer Volapi is her name? Yeah. Who, hey, quite frankly, Jennifer, I never heard of you till I came to work here. I mean, don't get so uppity like I'm some kind of trash. Believe me, we're going to have to explain who you are. Yeah, sweetheart, what am I, white trash, huh? <laughs> oh. What am I, white trash? Oh. What am I? So, uh... Um, she didn't speak to you in the hall, Betsy. No, she spoke to me once, but she could tell, you know, she's real good looking. I'd love to, I'd love to just eat her up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she looks at me like I'm some kind of lady. You don't think that hairline's a little low? Uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, here is a, histifer, a history of Jennifer Vallapi not saying my name. Mm. I think you'll enjoy this. And Reg is always saying my name, the Indian black yeah, guy. Yeah, they hand it off to him. Yeah. He can say it. Here we go. That's our report for tonight. Uh, we're going to leave you tonight with some sounds from the Caribbean International Festival. Now, it looks like she's going to say my name because she's yes, saying she's goodbye. Everything. But Reg is the one who's got to say it, and he, like, he doesn't get into it at all. Check out this move, all right? Because if you'll notice, <clears throat> Reg is, now, you see here? Reg's head will come down as he's saying my name. Really? All right? He's going to dip his head down. All right. Here we go. Well, a reminder that Howard Stern is next. You'll see a rare live studio performance by the Moody Balloon, so stay tuned. All right, well, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. See, he's a good guy. Yeah. But she'll never say my name. All never. right, that was one newscast. All right. We'll make up for last week. I'm Reg Wells. Don't forget, Howard Stern is coming up immediately following this broadcast. For all of us, thanks for joining us. Good night, everyone. That's our report for tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Reg Wells. And I'm Jennifer Vallapi. Uh, let's see, Gay will be here tomorrow with you. Um, I'm out on assignment. Good night, everybody. She's got plenty to say, except when it comes to my name. She's already saying good night. She yeah. hasn't mentioned you. I mean, this is every week. <laughs> every week. What am I? What, what do I look like, huh? Sweetheart, we got a lot higher ratings here than we do on the news. In you fact, should, you're holding us back. Princess, you <laughs> should say my name with some glee. Personally. Say it at the top of the show. Say it throughout the show. Because Reggie's got, like, white guys here, but... And that's why I think he's Indian. I think he might be Indian. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who he prays to. Buddha? <laughs> Jesus? We what don't know. Who do the Hindus pray to anyway? I don't know, but I know they're not... Uh, are they eating cows or not eating cows? <laughs> not eating cows. All right, I tell you. Don't forget Howard Stern is next tonight. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for us tonight. I'm Jennifer Velapi. And I'm Reg Wells along with Lisa Willis. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Don't forget Howard Stern is next. Good night. Good night. Anyway, anyway that's it. So anyway, I was getting a uh, complex, okay? You thought, she's not saying my name. So a word got back to her in the newsroom, so she finally did say my name. On one of these, she finally says my name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I, you know what? To me, when a woman ignores me, that means she wants me. <laughs> that means she wants me secretly. She's feeling your power. Yeah, it's like, you know, I'm not going to say his name. I'm, let me tell you, honey. I don't care if you say my name or not. To me, when a woman ignores me, she wants me. And tell her she can't have you, because you're a married no, man. you can't have me. I'm a married man. <laughs> for uh, us tonight, I believe. Is that correct, Mr. Wells? Yes. Is that time for us to say goodnight? I'm Reg Wells, <laughs> along with Lisa Wells. See you back here tomorrow night. Don't forget Howard Stern. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, hey, again. Still hasn't said it. Still can't say my name. Can't say my name.
Oh, man. Hey, by the way, go back to that picture. This woman right here. Excuse me, can I have the uh, picture? If I, I do some dental bonding right there. <laughs> Hi. And this hair. What is going on there? And I'd like to see some lower cut tops on the news. <laughs> like maybe a plunging neckline or something. You know what I'm saying? All right, here we go. Finally, she says my name, though. She loves me. Talking all through the news. Here we go. So that's it for here us it tonight. Is. I'm Jennifer Villapi. And I'm Reg Wells, along with Lisa Willis. We'll all be back here tomorrow night. Good night, everyone. Oh, by the way, Howard Stern is next. Posse. Well, I'm going to break out my condoms. She said my name. I'll tell you right now. All right, listen. Uh, we've got to take a commercial break. Linda Blair coming in. Do not tune out. Please, don't go anywhere. Robin's got some incredible news for you. you doing <laughs> all right listen a um, couple of letters we got this week Robin oh yeah first of all a listener sent us this for Gary this oh, is, nice. um, it says this is functional it is a hundred twenty five degree protection blocking the gums at all angles <laughs> no one will see Gary's gums and giant teeth Excellent. all right uh, I am currently working on a watering device for Gary's gums it will be called the uh, personal irrigation spraying system <laughs> and uh this is uh like this will actually someone actually made this so that it will it's designed specifically for you yeah, guys you can't this. robin if you can handle, handle yeah. it can i just say something this thing's light. yeah it's lightweight i'm very close to not wanting to do this anymore well just put it on <laughs> nobody cares what you want <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> Also, another letter that came in. Uh, I love the show and never miss it. I think you're all adorable. But boy, am I in love with your producer, Dan Foreman. No, come on. When this I saw him, joke. when I saw him at the Munster sketch, I couldn't explain it, but my heart melted. Please give him my picture and ask him to call me. This is from Eileen Dover, and there she is. And uh, I'm very, very excited. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Listen, um, You're such a jokester. our mayor has presented us with his new commercial, Robin. Ah, what's this all about? Well, you know, everybody's leaving New York in droves. Yeah, we got a lot of problems. Got a lot of pro in fact, me and Robin are the only two people left in New York, and we're doing the show from Secaucus. We're the only two white people left in New York. That's right. We are the only two white people. <laughs> By the way, we get a lot of mail. A lot of people think Robin's black. <laughs> Robin is uh, part Indian, that is true. But she is not black. That's right. All right? But then again, if you like black, she's black. Whatever you want. We're trying to make everyone happy. Exactly, Robin. Listen, as long as a lot's happening on your chest, I don't care what color you are. Now, um, the mayor is very upset that people yeah. are leaving New York. So what's he going to do about it? He has written a commercial to show a you... A new public service announcement. A special public service announcement. Watch this. You're rolling. Oh. <laughs> it's right there in front of you. I see, I see. Is that it? Is it right here? Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Smooth as silk. <laughs> And then forgot about it. You ever notice I do everything on this show? And there's still screw up? <laughs> Here we go. Hello, I'm New York Mayor David Dinkins. And while many are moving away from New York, many of us still love it here and are staying. When they leave New York, they always seem to come back because they ain't nowhere like New York City. Right like Big City. It's freedom. Not like Oklahoma City. Not like in Miami Beach, you know. I am white, you know. But I love New York City. I haven't done anything wrong. I have nothing to be afraid of. I'm because I love New York. You know what I mean? New York is New York. New York is a cream-colored candy balloon with a rich tapestry woven by a mosaic of trapezoid of colors, textures. New York is poetry. We marry, we marry. <laughs> New Yorkers are well read. They're going to add high as five more thousand. Wait, wait, hold up. Get it right now. Five thousand 
because the most police officers to do nothing. What? That's right. Okay. That's what they do. Modernized vigilantes with badges and guns. Hi. And my Hi. name is Michelle Smith, and I think they full of shit. There's philosophy. They go, what, round and round, and well, round and round, right? They ain't going nowhere. They gonna wind up the same place, the same spot, same position, same whatever. Now, who's have a ceremonia? You know, that's moving now. Who's not having more of the dollar? You know, that's no moving, no place. Stay there. New York has ballet. New York has commerce. At the river, they old enough. They could go right immediately to the SSI department, you know, and collect oh. more. Oh. You know, but it's better off in the welfare because they get more money. The There's no drug problem. If only the people of the Midwest could meet the pride of our housing projects. I drink, a lot of but I don't get around circle with it. I drink and I fight, but it's not enough to put me in jail. I love New York, as do many. This is my here. Well, I invest money here. Where can I go? If I break my lease, I'm going to come out behind this $1,000. Opportunities are here for the ones who choose to look for them. Once I get enough money, I'm going to put my money in stock. We don't get locked up for watching windows as much as we did. In New York, you might find the next Jimmy J.J. Walker. Being that he's black, he's going to look out for the black but man. No, well, he, no, he's not supposed to be a man to do that. He's supposed to be a man. But he, I saw him on, on prom time, and they stressed him about, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Al Sharpton. And he's funny. You know, all you gotta do, he said, oh, you Al Sharpton, man, listen, just do your job. To those <laughs> negative naysayers, our people say. I feel that if they from, if they not from the United States, they should leave New York. I'm not crazy. Somebody's got to stick it out. Sure, New Yorkers are spirited, but that's what makes up the fiber of a great city. That's why I just don't film that, man. So don't go. New York, it's a great metropolitan oasis, a glorious mosaic. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, 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 I'm getting the hell out of here is where I'm going. I tell you, you know, this is what we see every day. <laughs> That was just riding down the street. I got the heebie-jeebies. Come to New York. Come to New York. Get out of your mind. <laughs> and you're staying in Port St. Lucie. You can buy a house for $35,000. That's where I'm going. And those people won't be around it? Uh, that, no people <laughs> around that house. <laughs> Sick of that music, I'll tell you. I'm real sick of our theme music. Are we actually on the air? I don't are we, know. Are we on yeah. the air? Yeah, we are. You can disappear, will you? Okay. All right, good. <laughs> the guy's in my face telling me I'm on. I thought you were doing the show just to him. <laughs> I'm getting sick of our theme music. I thought we were going to change it every week. But the original idea was we were going to change it every week. But now I'm sick of it, to be honest with you. I'm absolutely sick of it. Well, nobody changed a thing. Well, all right. Hey, listen, we got our big guest tonight who's going to help us out with the big sketch. We're having a big sketch this week again. You're getting into the sketch humor. You used to say, I hate that Carol Burnett sketch humor. Well, it turns Tracy out... Tracy Ullman's no genius. Yeah, well, it turns out that we're exceptionally good at it. Uh, <laughs> judging by the Munster sketch and how many people like that, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Would you shut up? Get out of here. We got a floor manager tell me, yeah, that was good. I'm we didn't want an audience. I'll tell you that. Listen, <laughs> just do me a favor. Disappear. Go out that door and disappear. You are more annoying than any floor manager. I tell you, I got a guy here. He's sitting and he's having conversations with me. I like that. I'm talking more to him than I am to you. <laughs> you want to sit house. here? <laughs> Absolutely, full of mental patience. Now, I want to introduce you Linda Blair. Linda Blair, of course, was uh, in The Exorcist. That and was her big role, yeah. 12 years old, Exorcist. But she doesn't like to talk about The Exorcist <laughs> because it's very, it's difficult to talk about The Exorcist for some reason. Where is she? Linda Blair. She looks better than ever. Yeah, there she is. Look at her. Man, you look good. What did you do? You lost weight or something? Hi. Come on. Hi. Yes, this is real, this is real. Give me a kiss. Nice. Wow. Hey, Robin, how you doing? You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people complain to me, Robin, every week. They'd like to see your outfit. We have to show your outfit one oh, of these really? days. Yes, they want to, can you just stand up? Because my sister said, Robin, model? model your outfit. Right. There right, you go. Fair. I didn't even wear anything special today. No. That's not special? No. Wow. Yeah, you look good. <laughs> wow. Now, Linda, you look real good. You really do. Because, you know, you know, for a while, 
you were you were chubby for a while, right? Yeah, but so are you. You were yeah, so was I. I was she has a memory chubby. too. You were when we first met in Washington. When we first met in Washington, that was the time I thought Linda wanted to get it on with me. Yes, now uh, what yeah. was going on there? Because he, he thought said, wrong. No, no, no. Remember you said remember you said let's get in the uh, limousine and go off together. You don't remember that? You remember that? I think I could have gotten something that night. Yeah. Yeah. I was married, of and course. Then, As usual, I was married. Wait a minute. Didn't our producer at the time say he spent? Yeah, the, the guy evening? said he got to kiss you and stuff, but uh, you didn't go any further than that. Well, I doubt it. Yeah, yes. well, who knows? I remember listening to you on, on, the, on the radio in the morning, and I was scared to come do the show, but you were great. Now, listen, we are going to do a sketch tonight. Yes, we are. Called <laughs> The Sexorcist. <laughs> the Sexorcist. Now, what is this all about? All right, about? what we're going to do is, you see, uh, Linda said to me, I don't want to do The Exorcist. I don't want to throw up the pea soup. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. Okay. And I said, all right, then <laughs> what the thing will be is, it'll be The Sexorcist. Okay. Linda will be like a sexy woman who cures me. I'll be the possessor. She's the exorcist, in other words. Yeah. So I said, why don't you wear like one of those bikini thongs? Because you've got a really fine body. No, I don't want to be seen in a bikini. Right. I can act like I'm in one. Yeah. Well, you know, now I don't know, because competing with Robin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Will you be wearing, you be wearing a sexy outfit? Well, we'll, let's, get, we'll find out, won't we? Because I get possessed, and everyone tries to cure me, Robin. She brought her own outfit for the sketch? Yeah, she brought her own outfit, oh, but it's okay. like it's like a mini skirt or something. Nothing I haven't seen it. Nothing compared to what you're wearing. <laughs> we'll try it. something now. Because this is really, you know, Linda's complaining. Her movie, Repossessed. Yes, I was anxious to see this. Now, where is it? It didn't get released in New York, right? You're I'm, angry. I'm, I am angry. I'm very angry about that. Because it did really well in L.A. and around the country, and everyone loves it, and they're too cheap to bring it to New York. Well, this sketch could get you back on track. I'm serious. That's this really right. could. If you act well... Do me a favor. Don't laugh during this sketch, and don't ad lib. Try to act like a real actress, because Robin. You've written a very in-depth script. I've it's it's got seen humor. It. <laughs> I will show the clip. God's talking. Wait a minute. I hate that woman. I tell you what. If you manage to get a shot during the sketch of all the people and make sure the sound works, I'll show the clip. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Very good. Everybody's in there. All right. Let's see repossess your movie that wasn't shown in New York. And I'll take a look at this acting. <laughs> Let's see what we have. What is that? I'd like to do my impression of comedian Doug oh, Adams. There you are. Where is he? 99. Wait a second. Wait a second. There you are. You were you were uh, possessed in that. Oh yeah. So why won't you be possessed in the sketch? I've done it so many times. All right. Okay. Let me just. It see. was your turn. That was exciting. To That's you. good. That's good. Damn it. That is good. Now you have to compete with that. If only they'd show that in New York. <laughs> if only they would show that in New York. Thank you. Only so now, they would. Hey, well, what's the, now, who are you dating now? I mean, what's your story? You're not, uh, I know you're not lesbian. I know you love men. That's right. That's Thank you. You're married, though. No. Okay. You will never marry. No. And, and you're always, wait, always waiting for you. You're always, you're always, <laughs> with, you're always with horses every time I talk to you. So your family must be rich or something. No. You're rich. No. Because you didn't make millions of dollars off the exorcist, right? Right. You made, you, you made like a normal salary for a kid. Right, that's what most people think because it was a big film that we all made a lot of money, but we just did it for scale. Look how serious she is on TV. <laughs> I know, she's I know. not on the radio. Yes, I did it for scale. Now, so, now, someone told me you were dating the unknown comic, Murray no, Langston. No, no, Murray's my roommate. He's your he roommate? And his, ru his wife and they have a baby. Oh. Yes, people can't believe that. But what do you mean your roommate? You mean you live in Los Angeles yeah, with them? Yeah, yeah. With the unknown comic and his yeah. wife? Yeah. Don't they want some privacy away from you? Not from me. What is it? But, I mean, <laughs> Do you they all run around in little bags? I mean, yeah, does the baby have a bag? Get a little bag on their head? <laughs> we did a TV show and Murray brought the baby out with a little paper bag on its head. Yeah. And, and you won't do any nudity anymore? You remember when you did, though? She used to be a lot wilder. You used I don't to be think a lot what wilder. happened to you. What happened? <laughs> remember when you did Wee Magazine? Yeah, I like that. A long time ago. Like I so you're not dating naked. Rick James again? No more Rick James? I see him once in a while. You do? Is he still okay. your boyfriend? No. Who's your boyfriend now? I don't have one. You just, you just, I couldn't believe it. What did I hear the other day? Who was the first single straight man? You can't find a man because you're too particular. That's but your problem. Well, that's first okay. boyfriend? She lived with somebody at the age of like 16 or something? Rick Springfield. Rick, Rick Springfield. Springfield. Boy, his career's going well, huh? <laughs> I think his career's good. You see him I at all? He had a great career. Yeah, that's true. So you mean it's over? You mean he's retired too? Oh, I don't know. I haven't spoken with him. Yeah. And, uh, hey, listen. Who else do you want to know about? I don't know. I, <laughs> So you're not with Rick Springfield anymore. Right. You live with Murray Langston, but you don't have sex with him and his wife. Right. And you used to date Rick James. And she sees him every once in a while. All right. Right. That's right. Hey. So we're up to date. Still, my, uh, we got to do a commercial here, and then we're going to do the <laughs> sketch. And do me a favor, play it serious. All right. It's a love Stick scene. Stick to the script. It's a love scene between you and me while I'm possessed. But try to play it serious. 
Okay? No, no, play it serious. I don't. think she's going to be goofy, Howard. No, she better not I be think she's going to be Because goofy. I'll stop the damn sketch. Treat it like on Saturday Night Live when they get all upset if somebody You're going to have a it. rehearsal? Yeah, we'll have a rehearsal. Okay. Yeah, rehearsal. I'll be in makeup, of course. <laughs> I'm here to help you, and you keep handing me Joe Piscopo's reject jokes. <laughs> what was that? Well, when it was going the other way, it was one. Enough nonsense. You look terrible. <laughs> we must diagnose your problem. I have no feeling in my loins and no sexual desire. Your problem sounds like impotence. Help me. You need word association. Now I'll show you some pictures, and I want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Gary's an idiot. Wait for the pictures, you moron, okay? Okay. All right, Amy Lynn, does she excite you? <laughs> I see. <clears throat> Raquel Welch, does she turn you on? Oh. I see. Hmm. Um, Jane Fonda. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How about <laughs> Oprah? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, you do have a problem, but she is a pig, what a porky. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Doc. Doctor, what's wrong with me? The reason women do not excite you is that you are possessed by Satan. You need a gay priest. Why? Raising. Oh. People in the Midwest like to laugh at homosexuals. Uh, it makes their empty lives more meaningful. Uh, Let's bring in Father Ritter. No, He's been Martin. accused of being gay. Oh, oh. no, sir. Queer St. Jaley, Donkey P.J. and Noam Tuum. Is this an exorcism? No, it's Latin, silly. Oh, oh. so young. Oh. So young. Too young. I'm too young to be possessed. No, no, no. Too young to be lying supine with nobody on top of you. Help him, you old queen! You have an evil venom in you. I must suck. I must suck the venom out. You're not going to suck the venom out of me, you sour rat. Then I'll suck it out of you. Get away from me, you tawny pervert! Who's this cameraman? What's his name? I think the problem could best be solved by a voluptuous babe. Ah, uh, you mean Robin Quivers? No, her breasts are too small, and she has that ridiculous shrapnel hanging out of her ear. No, no. This is a job for the sex sorcerer. The sex sorcerer. So beautiful that she will make you feel like a man again. Uh, uh. I think I want you. Uh, my thighs ache. Uh, my oils are heating my soft underbelly. Uh, it's full of desire. Uh, I want to kneel before you. Why, such a beautiful woman? Why do you want me? Because although the show is produced by the same people who make Joe Franklin, uh, I believe your show could be picked up by a real network. Uh, uh, and I'd just kill myself if I wasn't part of that. Oh! Baby Jane! Oh! Help me! Help me! Kiss me! Uh, Rinse me! Uh, Rinse me! Uh, Help me! Uh, Help me! Uh, yes! Yes! I believe it worked! 
I'm in love with you. I want to marry you. I want to marry you. But I can't marry you. I'm already married. And here's a picture of... Where? My husband. Microphone and tell me what's so funny. Okay. What? What is it? The new stage manager is very funny. He is. He is. You gotta listen. We have a new stage manager. Do me a favor. Relax a little. We'll back a little. You don't have to be right on. You don't have to be right on top of me. Yeah. Well, we don't like you. All right. Goodbye. All right. Linda. I, now, Robin. Yes. I thought I was doing a pretty damn good job on that. Yeah. Come on. I think overacting works. Yeah, yeah. You got to know when to overact. But I you, you were you, incredible. Did you, I mean, I thought you would have gotten a little more into the love scene, to be honest with you, a little bit My, more. Robin, and our favorite part is that I, I'm saying I want you, I need you, and you're, you're right there. I'm going, no, no. I really wanted to make Pea out My with favorite is the soup in the you ear. You kiss me, and you, she went. <laughs> There's no way I figured out how I can, like, make out with women, you know, because my wife doesn't like that. Yes. But if I'm in a scene, I think my wife wouldn't care. But why do you put green pea soup in your mouth well, before you know. ask the girl to kiss you? I, just, I don't know. I just wanted it to be funny, too, you know? But you have never looked better. Now, how did you get in shape like this? First of all, you look completely different. You know that. You look like you've got somebody else's body. Yeah, I mean, oh, now, wait a second. Nice. But those are your breasts, right? I mean, you didn't get breast reduction, did you? No. You look unbelievable. <laughs> That's not breast reduction. No. You didn't do anything different with your face. No. Nose job, nothing. No, her face looks the same. You guys, anybody can tell that. You look so damn delicious. Right. I just wanted to <laughs> nuzzle you up to your little nubbins, my angel. <laughs> yeah. You're not, you don't hey, have a boyfriend at actually, all. Actually, just to answer your question, everybody asks the same thing. Why did I change so much? And with me and with certain people, it is age. Yeah. I got... I got you got better with it. Yeah, well, you certainly did get better with it. Well, anyway, we want to thank Linda Blair, who's in a new movie that you can't see anywhere. You won't be able to see that anywhere. We well, see video everywhere but here, yes, apparently. It's, uh, it's across country from L.A. to uh, stop from Where Chicago. Where does it stop? It's the Mason-Dixon line, the Mississippi. But you can see it on video come January. And you will return to Los Angeles after this? I'm doing a play in San Francisco opening. Uh, November 5th with Murray Langston, who's the unknown comic, and Pat Paulson. And you will go home to a house where Murray Langston, yes. the unknown comic, will yes. live with you. Yes. And, and his you, wife. And his wife. Yes. And, and you get along. Baby. And you get along well with yes. them. And you, and, and this is a huge house? It's pretty big. And you have your own bedroom? Oh, uh, yeah. And you have a, and you don't really, do you share the same kitchen? Yeah. You share the same kitchen? You have the yeah. same entrance, so it's right. not like a... Yeah, but we all get along. We're like a, a, a group that mo most people can't get along like we do, yeah. but we do. I thought, I thought London Lee might be in that house, too. We were looking for him to tell you the truth. I was wondering, can't I come live with y your wife and your kids? Believe me, I would let her live with my <laughs> wife. That would be okay with you. See, that would be fine with me. If I was the unknown comic, I'd try to scam her into my house, too, you know? It's like a Donahue segment or something. Yeah. It's kind of weird, like when uh, Donahue has those couples that all live together That's and stuff. That's right, yes. But, you, he, but the unknown comic is not nailing you in any respect. No, no. Sexually. I'm the actor who the house and comes <laughs> and lives with you. Right. I bring my own suitcase. You, but, like, if you take a shower, do you accidentally ever, like, step out of the shower naked? Kid and see, and like the unknown comic is like walking by or something? No. Never so does he come that. out of the shower with only this bag on? Yeah, right. <laughs> all wet down. I and wouldn't know, Robert. Yeah, I don't know. They it's always wet. have different, we all have always had different rooms. Yeah, I just, I said, I would like. How long have you been living together? On and off for like eight years. Yeah. Very strange. I know. No, well, at least you're not with that Rick James anymore. That yeah. was driving the, I was driving the Ku Klux Klan crazy. <laughs> it really was. I mean, really. And what the heck happened to him anyway? Yeah, what happened with him? <laughs> Did we just like uh, All right, we want to thank friends. Linda Blair for coming in and being with us. Oh, 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 oh. Who looks good? 
All right. But thanks for having me, by the way. Hey, we loved having you. And you liked doing the sketch. That, that was, you know, that was probably my favorite sketch of all time was that sketch. You should have, <laughs> you should have worn the file. Uh -huh. What do you see? It looks hot in a bathing suit, though? I tell you, you got to tell these actresses you got a costume for them. I wanted to He's smack right. this bitch. Last night, I was like on the phone with her for yeah. two hours. I said, come on, wear a bathing suit, honey. You look good. This is the wrong test. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, sweetheart. No, no, no. Oh, man. What you're saying Look how is, flat your stomach is. What can I just size show? are you? Because Look we already have a costume. Can I just show this? Look how flat her stomach. Can I just touch this? Yeah, go ahead. Look at. Oh my. God. Is that from horseback riding? Right? Oh wow, that's I'm great. I'm gonna start taking that up. Standing ovation. All right, okay, all right. Your acting was just okay, but boy, that last stomach. <laughs> you should touch that, Robin. Touch that. I'm not kidding. That's oh, hard as a rock. You doing sit-ups or something? Just riding. Ride is that? Riding a horse? You mean you, you ride a... Touch her, Robin. Touch her. 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 Touch her stomach. Come on. Come on. I hope you don't mind. Touch her stomach, please. Just touch her. This is from riding a... Ooh, wow. Look at this. That's from riding? I feel like Murray Langston and his wife, the unknown comic. All right. They step out of the shower. Hey, don't touch Linda's stomach. All right. Uh, listen, we uh, have to move along here. We want to thank Linda Blair and uh, go see her movie. We possess. We possess. Okay, we'll be back right after these words. Bye. Yeah. This week we sent John to a Yoko Ono press conference. Under well, this was the 50th birthday of John Lennon. Nobody is a bigger fan of John Lennon than I am. Understand this, Robin. Okay. So when I tell you that John went there to uh, mess around at the Yoko Ono press conference... To praise Yoko. He went to praise? I don't like Yoko. I've made no secret of this. First of all, I saw John Lennon mugs. Where did you see these things? Where did I see those, Gary? <laughs> uh, it was in a magazine article. I saw them in a magazine article. Is that right? That's where I saw them. <laughs> all right, so Gary saw them. Somebody saw them. And you got upset because she's, Gary saw that. She's merchandising his name. This, 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 this John Lennon apron. Do you understand this? This isn't what John wanted. John doesn't want this. He talks to you. Absolutely, he talks to you. <laughs> You're the keeper of his spirit on earth. So stuttering John goes over to the Yokoono press conference. It's hosted by a disc jockey here, Scott Muni, who says he's a friend of John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I don't know. So you got up at the press conference to ask some questions, and John got thrown out. <laughs> what did you do? What is the question you asked? I asked him, um, I mean, how do people like John Lennon have to go out and say, me one. <laughs> Can I ask one question? I don't have a mic. What is he talking into? You don't have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. I do not have a microphone. Yeah. I thought maybe we would It amazed me. It amazed me. Now we could have no microphone. You were supposed to put the mic out there. You said you do everything on this show. Why did you forget his mic? You know, I have to go do that. Would you stop clapping? Get out of here with my life. Look at what's going on back here. I got a whole audience. That's your job, genius. What's the matter with you? Well, he was talking. I started looking to see if he had, a, you know, one of those wireless. I something we had a boom or something. or something. Let's watch, the, you know, oh. tell you the truth. What John has to say, you don't need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but here is the tape of what happened at the uh, press conference, Rob. A dream we dream alone uh -huh. is only a dream. But the dream we dream together is reality. <laughs> Gee, everybody knows what that means. Well, you know, she's got a little cotton mouth, too. Can you hear a yum, 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 yum? I didn't catch that. Talking? That doing when you're Can we hear that? Mommy? Little cotton mouth? Yeah. Listen. Only a dream. But oh, yeah. Dream. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you Isn't Ringo embarrassing the Beatles enough? What do we need Yoko to embarrass? <laughs> Gather. It's reality. Thank you. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, John, what are you doing? You're planning here? This guy, this guy comes up to me. He's, he's uh, one of the ushers or whatever that's at, the, at the thing. And he, and he said to me that, this, that I can't ask him any questions. What? You and Yoko together. I'm so confused. <laughs> they recognized me and they said for me not to ask any questions. All right, but you didn't care. You're going to ask embarrassing questions. I said questions I'm going to go for it anyway. I admire that in you. Is it fair that guys like John Lennon die while Scott Muni lives? Oh. Can we have the next question, please? Oh. 
<laughs> but Yoko dealt with it. This is pretty cool. Yeah, they wanted to go on to the next question, but she handled now, it. Now, if you notice the camera work, looks like someone's just been shot. John is getting now dragged out of this event, okay? <laughs> Being dragged out physically. People don't like this kind of irreverence at uh, John's birthday party. Can you imagine this? No irreverence at John Lennon's birthday party. Personally, I don't understand that. Do you? He was an irreverent kind of guy. The man who was with Nielsen running around with beer and, and heroin <laughs> and, 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 and picking up girls and running off with May Pank. And nobody has time for jokes. <laughs> I think Scott Moon is a lovely person. And so are you all. And I think that... <laughs> I'm that wasn't bad. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Yeah. You know, they treated Sirhan Sirhan gentler <laughs> than they treated John. I swear to God. Now, what happens? You go outside and people start yelling at this you? Guy, what, what, some guy comes out that's pushing me and yelling at me, threatening to break the camera, telling him that he's going to kill me. Who are you, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him yeah. Him. He just kept on pushing me. Okay. Oh, I know who that is. That's Ted Utz, isn't it? <laughs> Was that him? Could have been. That's him, right? Oh, that is Ted. Oh. That's the program director of a competing radio station. Oh, that's the guy that hit me. He, he came he up, hit you? Yeah, he came up to me and, po and popped me on the you chest. You got a tape of him popping No, you? the cameraman was inside getting his cable. You could sue this guy. Yeah, yeah, he hit my chest. You have and he, witnesses? Yeah. Oh, you do have yeah, witnesses? Yeah, witnesses. Yeah, this is the second confrontation. You got some money. Sue him. I'm going to sue, 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 Huh? Oh, you got many bands, people like Bob Geldof, off his race, off the whole Westinghouse <laughs> network. <laughs> the whole... But he's still, still he's still wrong. Why are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? People are... People walk are, away! What are you doing? People are hassling me about asking the question. So you walk away! It was such a sacred event. And the people were upset. I'm saying. He's holding forth on the street. You know, you remember that they used to have the loving? Yeah. This is a stupid end. <laughs> a stupid end. <laughs> Yo, I get so vicious. You know, I'm I mean, out there. Get, get out away. You did away. your job. Yeah, you I'm did doing your the... job. You don't have to waste your time with these guys on the street. What are you doing? You're supposed to be some kind of star. Hey, you sound like you're winning. Scott Muni, Scott Muni. Scott Muni, Scott Muni. He's like a mental patient. I'm sorry. He's trying to help you, man. All right, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get you, you know. Good job, believe me. <laughs> There's nothing else to talk about anyway. <laughs> well, I'm saying that... That's got me to get so. No, you said it's unfair that someone like John Lennon lives and then... Uh, no, 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 that John Lennon dies while well, that got me to live. That's not a bad question in my book. That's not putting down Scott Meany. Like, that's right, because Scott Meany bands, good for they're me. dead. You know how many bands he censored that aren't allowed on his radio station? You know how many? Probably uh, over 20, 30 bands are not allowed to even make it in New York. No make it in Washington. Guys. Excuse me. Excuse me. Give me a picture of what's going on there, please. It's, uh, it's Saturday night, and it's time for some news, for God's sake. That's right. There's a lot's going on. It really is going on. I mean, we've been very frivolous today, and it's time to check out what's really happening. Right. As you said before, you know, we saw a little bit of the ceremony at the UN with Yoko Ono. It was John's 50th birthday this week, and they marked it by playing Imagine on a thousand stations across the world, yeah. all at the same time. And yeah, we were part of that magic. <laughs> oh, yeah, we yeah. were. Yeah, uh, it was a real moving experience. But you know what happened later on? Apparently, a bunch of people got together at Strawberry Field in Central Park here in New York. Right. And our own boy, Gary, yes. was walking through the park. Saw Yoko Ono show up yeah. and ran home and got his video camera. Right, right. So we have a little bit of tape of Yoko meeting John's subjects. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> She's like Sorry, bowing. Guys, Don't guys, touch me, please. Okay. Thanks, thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, Nancy's trying to get away. I've had enough of this. Now this is cool. Yoko's got to get away from her fans, <laughs> her three fans. Okay, so she's got to make a move. Here, check this out now. She's got. This is the Dakota right here. Okay. She's got to make a move. You can tell I'm totally into this thing, huh? <laughs> New toy. She's got to make a move all the way here and then cut across the street. Uh-huh. But her problem becomes there are cars there. Oh, traffic. All right, so watch Let's this. Let's see what Yoko does. How does Yoko avoid her fans? 
Now watch what happens. Her bodyguard almost gets killed. Oh, she has to pull the bodyguard back. There's a car coming. Yoko to the rescue. <laughs> yes, isn't she wonderful? Thank goodness she was there. Now, well, here's the problem you're faced with, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you take a look at your screen, you'll see that you're here. That's Yoko right there, okay? Uh-huh. Yoko has got to make her way all the way down the street here. <laughs> all right? And somehow escape these fans. <laughs> yeah, they're still trailing her. They're dogging her. Watch this move, all right? That's a baby. Black the baby. Casual baby. All right. Now watch the move. What would you do if you were Yoko? Now she's, you know, behind all this construction stuff. she got to get across the street. Ooh, good Go move! Yes. 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 Well, wait a second. Ward it again. Nope, here she goes. She's running she across through. the street. Yes. Very nice. Quickly now, we're almost to the door. Quick, 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 Keep quick, moving. quick. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> oh, somebody uh, stopped us. Someone got it. All right. I love oh. it. Oh. Strawberry field. Oh, Yoko came in and she stopped the mosaic. You know the mosaic down here? Right. Yoko mosaic from Italy. It says imagine. Well, she stopped there for as much of the breath and then she came through with her bodyguard. Uh, the bodyguard was, ooh. they were neck and neck right about this spot here. We talking about Gandhi or Yoko? <laughs> How old are you now? How old are you now? I remember when I first heard of him at the age of 14. It was a great turning point, especially... Hold it a second. Oh. Wait a second. What's that? We have the trauma of having suffered the John Kennedy assassination. Oh, oh man, he's so right. Come on, put it on the Now, what happens? Some guy gets angry at the scene, right? Yeah, he's upset because it's not nice. He's like a weird a John Lennon impression. John Lennon. He's making a fool out of the whole point. And it's a shame that, that he's the impersonator. Because there's so many people that could imitate. <laughs> Does anybody go to work anymore? How do we get to Strawberry Field? I have a better question. Does anybody who loves John Lennon have teeth? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he, that, um, he could play. The music so much better. <laughs> I see some teeth there. He produced my mind to decide for itself. Right. Which means to say, does it really matter over mine? Never mind. It really doesn't matter over mine. Never mind. Yeah. Imagine yeah. mankind and God and now existence. Imagine. Yeah, That's what he did nice. for me. My love! <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Robin, can I have a uh, close up shot on your ear for a second? Why? Now, let me see something here. Please have a shot of Robin's ear. Monty, just stand there. Now, here, can I, ear. now, is this Spartacus' shield? <laughs> what is that? How did you guess? I see. All right. <laughs> well, that's what's happening, Howard. Well, Robin. I think just a commemoration of John Lennon is a good way to end the show. It absolutely is. And we're out of time, but we'll see you next week for this uh, wonderful show. Hey, thanks for the high ratings. The ratings have been going up and up and up, and we're getting away with more crap. Yeah, you know, we didn't get a chance to... Uh, change Al Sharpton's hairdo, but we'll do that next week. Next week we change Al Sharpton's hairdo. You're going to love it. Robin <laughs> picked out a few exciting uh, numbers for you. And uh, by the way, keep sending us those letters and cards, okay? <laughs> we appreciate all the good-looking women writing us, I'll tell you that. We'll see you next time.